And I always laugh because I do feel like you love kind of clapping back at people too. Like there was, you posted <sighs> a TikTok much. last month that had me <laughs> that had me dying because somebody commented like, "Oh, she's begging for streams," and yeah, you were like, like "Hello, oh, yes. this is my job." But like, <laughs> please stream. Why, my why music. do you think I'm here <laughs> yeah. like, right like, now? No, like, no, don't stream my music. <laughs> I really don't want like, you please to. Please don't <laughs> press play on my songs. <laughs> right? Like what? <laughs> no, I know. But sometimes I gotta like um, stop myself because I am very quick with my mouth. Yeah. And like growing up, I was just, I wasn't messy, but like I would not be quiet. If someone came for me, I would come for you back. Mm-hmm. But now I feel like, let's keep it cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? What's up, everyone? It's Chicks in the Office with Rhea and Fran, giving you that Friday energy on a Wednesday. This podcast is presented to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. You Pepsi. know that we are absolutely loving our Pepsi Wild Cherry. We have the Pepsi Wild Cherry Zero Sugar sitting right next to us, and it's tasty, it's delicious, and it helps you to indulge in those wild moments in your everyday life. Yeah. Anything can really be be a wild moment you know if you make it a wild moment it can be exactly whether you're at home relaxing Mm -hmm. say you just melt into your couch on a saturday and watch eight episodes of a tv show we both just we both just did that yeah so it could be that or you know you're getting ready for for a night out getting ready for a night out or you're getting ready for a big game this weekend big game is coming up you're gonna have your apps and you're gonna have a nice side i'm headed to vegas yeah um, uh, tomorrow night i need some uh something wild some pepsi wild cherry some pepsi wild cherry keep my keep my night going it's very exciting you can indulge in that little bit of wild in your everyday in your everyday life for sure i got it every time we sit here with these pepsis i just want to Sip, 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 sip. Yeah, just crack one sip, open. Sip, sip, sip. Don't worry. Some ASMR coming coming to you soon again. Exactly. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild, baby. Get wild with us. Grab your Pepsi Wild Cherry. Get wild. Yeah. Buck okay. wild. Okay. Remember that Remember show? Remember that show? Yeah. yeah. I loved that show. <laughs> R.I.P. Shane Gandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really sad when that happened. That was a wild show. Buck wild. Buck wild. It was a fantastic show. It was yeah. like, it was exactly what we needed right after Jersey Shore. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it was almost like, how are we ever going to live up to this? Right. It was like the out, floor Bama Shore. Well, no, it was like, Buck Wild first. No, I know. But I would say we're always trying to. Right. But remake the magic. Right. That that was Jersey Shore. But they they did with Buck Wild. Yeah. Yeah. But then, you know. Yep. Unfortunate circumstance. And yep. then they made floor Bama Shore. And, they would, you know. Yeah. Not. Not. Had its moments. It had its moments, but not nearly no. as good as Buck Wild. No. In my personal opinion, um, how are we doing? Yeah, you're going to Vegas for the dozen, the dozen tournament yeah. trivia tournament on Thursday night. I'm excited, but also um, it's just such a quick trip, you know. And it's the uh, FOMO level because, like, I wouldn't have the FOMO for the things that happen Super Bowl weekends if I was just at home. Like, mm-hmm. if I if I was just not going yeah. at all, I'd be like. I don't really, I don't really care what's going on out there, you know. But when you are going for just like one night, it's like, well, damn, why the fuck am I just? <laughs> why didn't you night? extend it? Because, because I looked, and I just out of curiosity killed the cat, you know. And I, it's astronomical. The prices. Oh, I are... wasn't even going to ask about staying for the actual game. Oh no, 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 no. Talking no. about like no, just stay like a hotel room. Oh really? For an extra night is or just like. Yes, it is insane. First of all, at, like basically everything's like sold out. Mm-hmm. Like it's you know there's nine million hotels, but it's it's crazy. Like I just looked at, to see oh extend what no not worth it. Yeah, not worth it. Um, I also think because of the letdown of last year and doing the whole thing. Staying because the Eagles were playing, going to some of yeah. the parties, like having all that fun. The the energy was just so high. Right. And because the Eagles were playing. Yeah, you don't have a dog in this fight. I don't have a dog in the fight, so it's like I don't need to stay. No. Right. <laughs> I You're, don't need to stay. You'll feel good when you get home. Yeah, exactly. You'll it's be like, just, I'm actually happy I didn't stay. Right. It's just like the two Vegas and back from Vegas in, in one in, night. In like thirty six hours. Yeah, is that's that's a long trip. East yeah. coast to west coast. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, that is a that but is I'm, a long yeah. trip. I'm excited for the dozen though. Like we're doing it in this uh 
like gaming yeah. place. Like it's like a pyramid. Mm-hmm. But they do a lot of gaming Very events cool. there. For those who don't so know. So it looks really cool. For those who don't know, the Dozen is um, the trivia uh, tournament, trivia show. Trivia show. Hosted by Jeffy, Jeffy Lowe, Lowe here at Barstool. And so there are a ton of, uh, you know, people here are on teams for the Dozen. Um, I've never joined a team. I've been, it's been talked about. I've always about. thought you should. I, uh... I've always said you should. I know. I know. And I think about it here and there. Yeah. It's more just like it makes me nervous. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, you know, you just. You got to take that risk. You got to take the risk because there is, the reward is so high. Right. When you, you win. Know? Yeah. Like the reward is so high. When you have a game where you're just on fire, it is worth all the ones where you have a game where you just throw out some yeah. of the work. Like. I can say because my sister, mm-hmm. like Gia's on a team, and she had one of the worst. I heard about this. Yeah, one of the worst guests. And she's gonna be mad at me for even bringing it up again on a different platform. But like, there's a question in the dozen where they do a bonus round, and it's a team effort. But the bonus round always changes, and some a certain format of the bonus round is everyone gets a piece of paper, and it's three people on a team. And you go up one v one on somebody other mm-hmm. on the other team, and you have to write down your guess. So it's like closest number to, and it's not like Price is Right rules, but it's like how many calories are in like a certain food item, mm-hmm. or how many touchdowns, how did many this episodes guy, of a TV show, how many episodes of a TV show. So Gia got asked how many episodes in total have aired of um, Supernatural, <laughs> the CW show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And she get, she wrote down seventeen hundred episodes. <laughs> Crazy, just one of those great moments, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, and she and it was just cracking me up because she was like, "I was doing multiplication." I was like, "Honestly, Gia, I think you just added an extra zero. Yeah. Like, I think in your mind you were like, okay, ten seasons, seventeen episodes mm-hmm. a season." And like you were writing down at one seventy right, and just and landed just, on seventeen hundred. <laughs> yeah, zero. I mean, but it's just been like the ongoing joke of people tweeting at her, being like, "Hey, I'm about to watch season fifty of Supernatural." <laughs> it's so funny. Those are the classic moments. Uh, the dozen has a, a lot of those great moments, and yeah, there have been times where multiple teams have talked to me about like. Hey, yeah, because you be good. If, if this third person on our team ever leaves, like, yes. you should join. I've gotten that from a lot of teams where I'm like, yes, I, I the will. Is you there. know, call me up if that person ever leaves. Yeah. Um, with multiple different teams because they're, you know, they're yeah, always yeah, like, there's, hey, there's we could use, we could use. There's a lot of movement. People trade, that whatever. Yeah. Um, and some people can use pop culture because it, there's a lot of sports questions yep. and um a lot of the guys have that covered like going back to like you know the 1980s yeah um no it's insane they, i don't know how they know right this there's stuff. a lot of sports like, questions i really don't know how they know the sports and, questions and then there's pop culture and yep. there's others there's other there's things always a movie and TV and category music. and music in every episode and and, and celebrity mashup, which is right. my area of expertise, which I think you are also extremely good at. Right. Like, and we have the same skill set here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for believing in me. Um, I'm just waiting for that right moment, that yeah, right team. Yeah. The right team now, to come around. Marty ha- has just made a team and yes. he's been playing. And there's and, been a lot of moving pieces on his team. And there has been. And people enjoy watching because they're very funny. But on the last episode he did it while we were in the bahamas mm. and i was on the beach with no service oh and he, oh because he was gonna call he was somebody gonna call, i watched he, it he was, was gonna call phone a friend for the, for the celebrity, celebrity mashup. mashup which was jeremy piven and matt LeBlanc. yeah you knew it would have got I, me yeah. in a second yep and i he honestly called, was watching this episode from the couch yeah. and when he said i'm gonna he goes i'm gonna call glennie i went oh my god he's not gonna call me <laughs> no well that was on me because he was like i'm gonna yeah, yeah and i said don't call me i don't have service yeah so th- this is gonna be spotty i also don't want to sit in the room the whole yeah. time i want to be on the beach well glenn answered from a the, flight the plane midair, and it, on on a flight and it broke out yes. so it, it would have had the same thing would happen to me um so it was so funny because people were like why didn't he ask you and i was like i literally said don't like yeah i'm on the beach i said do, he, do asked, not, he <laughs> dnd do not disturb he he 
did not ask me because I said to him, do, do not, not ask do me. Not ask me. <laughs> but I am uh, I am open for future for future yes. calls for, you know, we'll see. We'll see. But you you have a great team. Yeah. And you guys are in all the tournaments and, you know, yet to secure that big win. But you yeah, guys always yeah. do make it. To yeah, the end we and, are. And maybe uh, the, I have a feeling that this may be your time. I know. We've come in. We've lost in the final of the tournament the last two years. Yeah. So, so maybe this is know, the big win. Time's a charm. Yeah, it happens. Um, so yeah, four teams are playing in Vegas. Uh, all like most of the time, a lot of our coworkers are out mm-hmm. in Vegas for like the whole week. So a lot of people are out there yeah. already. There's a ton of events going on. Um, it's a, it's funny when you're on the email of like, Hey, you're literally just coming for the dozen. <laughs> yeah. Um, these are your options for flights you will be there for one night <laughs> right right yeah we've done the super bowl a couple times super bowl week yes. we did um minnesota was the first one we did we did i was looking at old pictures Atlanta. the other day oh. and it was just oh, oh my, my god. god i can't even i cannot oh, like, even look at the some pictures of, of us pictures. in minnesota specifically might as well be completely different people like it's six years ago might as well have been 2005 and it <laughs> feels like 20 like the, we we just are we look like we're in the 80s yeah i don't it's just i'm i look young but also old at the same time same like i'm dressed like an old lady like my fashion sense was like a little too mature for for somebody <laughs> at like 23 yeah. like what the, i was like i'm looking at these pictures i'm like friend sex it up a little you know yeah. like i was like ugh. Yeah, I uh, I look back and I I really cringe at my fashion choices yeah. and my hair and so many different parts. I'm just like, oh, but um, yeah, we did Minnesota, we did Atlanta, yeah, and we did L. A. We Mo- used to have parties with the yeah the company. Well, we we were at one of the parties, and then Atlanta was rough and rowdy, yeah. and then L. A. There was no party. No. We did our live show. What wasn't Atlanta the one that we did go to the party? No, Minnesota. We went to the party. No, Atlanta that's like a was rough, party. Atlanta was oh, rough Barcelona. and rowdy. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Um. Uh, yeah, but like it was like a rough and rowdy sh- party. Is that the one combo. that flooded? Miami flooded. Oh, Miami. We were Miami. that one. We were not there. Um. It really depends on the year when yeah. we, when we get sent. <laughs> depends yeah. on the activities. I like depends we did on the a activities show. planned. Um. Totally. I mean, I've and I've said it many a times, but that was like to now have gone to the Super Bowl last year that the Eagles lost when I was in Minnesota for an entire week and and didn't, didn't go. go yeah and and flew home crazy like the day before the Super Bowl and keep in mind my parents went to that Super Bowl right and I also stayed <laughs> yes like my parents went but it was I was in different a completely times. different place yeah uh z- Different money scenario. Yeah, very like, different situation. Different, very different situation. Different, like, completely different person, Lo- truly. Right. No, looking back on these things is so funny because I actually remember um, my first year here. So I started in September 2016. So, like, t- the 2016 Super Bowl, but it was yeah. in 2017. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, that, they, Houston. Yeah, Houston. They did the Barcelona rundown on Comedy Central. Yep. And Glenn, Glenny Balls, um, he, they had him on the the Barcel rundown on the show on Comedy yeah. Central. And now me and Glenn started around the same time. He started as an intern and then he brought, you know, me yep. in. And I was so fucking jealous that he got to go. <laughs> and I was so like I remember being like, yeah. why does he get to go? And I don't. Meanwhile, I'm I'm an intern. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's delusional in my brain to even be thinking. But he had such a shining moment on this, right? That I remember when he came back me erica and glenn were standing in a circle talking and erica was like glenn like you're just you're just such a superstar like you are you are such a superstar and then she looked at me and said your time will come (laughs) (laughs) and i and i for a while was like is my time ever gonna come damn and you know it was right it has come she was right it has come it has come um but in that moment i was like i was like wait (laughs) lens superstar yeah what am i you know like is it ever gonna come um i think it has yeah you know not comedy central uh, tv but no i hey we have a very you know we're we're a two-time show here people's choice award losers (laughs) yeah exactly so shortly after nominated for a people's choice award exactly you know 
Yes. It's just funny to think but back on no, those times. Definitely. <laughs> Go, going through the Super Bowl week is always a time that I reminisce because I go through my phone like you know you just got on this day bl- blank years ago you just see it and it's always like it's always interesting to see what was going down mm-hmm. this time of year every week because it's always such a busy week here at yeah at, and at barcelosports.com yo, it's a nice week to look on the milestones yeah definitely. like you're it like it's crazy we all lived in the same house like at those early yeah, years, the the craziest is that the we all slept house, in a soda house in the slept, same house. We slept on mattresses like in the living room. I slept like, on a couch next to that didn't fit. all of our coworkers. All of our coworkers <laughs> slept in the same house. I remember the first night. That's crazy. Like, Honestly, that's crazy. Waking, Were we the OG hype house? <laughs> we should have been. We should have been making videos yeah. like. I, I mean, we the, were the first, like, that, but it was like it was for a week, you know. Yeah. The first morning, like a, waking up to Dave's voice, I was just like. Oh my god! Yeah, like yeah. we would wait. We we slept on mattresses in the living room, yep. and then would get up and walk into the kitchen, and Dave is sitting there having a cup of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> like we, that's what I'm saying. Insane, like that was like if we to think it was about. a content house that if we stayed there for like three months, that would have been really a content house before content yeah. houses were content houses. Right, exactly. And now everyone they ever yeah. put everyone in hotel rooms and yeah, everything. Yeah, There's yeah. too many people now. It would. It, it wouldn't. It was like a. Whole I mean, fight. it's a HR nightmare at, 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 as a company that grows. Right. <laughs> no, the fact that we slept on mattresses. Yeah. In the middle of the living room. Yep. They didn't even give us room. Like I had no. to tiptoe around because I'm like, every you guys were sleeping in the room next to us. Shri and Fran were sleeping. I remember we watched no, think, Grace like, and Frankie like, on Friends. Oh my god, we uh, watched iPad. so much Grace and Frankie on my iPad. <laughs> like, Brett Merriman was like sleeping next to us. <laughs> It's absurd. It's absurd to think about. It's so funny though. So uh, many funny great GTs, times. GTs, GTs. No, seriously, GTs. so funny. We should put that. Minnesota I remember we video did. We really, we should because the, honestly, the Vikings fans. Re- <laughs> <laughs> the ice skating video is oh, at all God. time. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you've been around long enough, if you're listening to the show and you have been around long enough to remember the Minnesota ice skating video. Thank you. Thank, thank you, for, you still, for still being thank here. Thank you for still being with us. And if you are new and haven't seen it, look it up. <laughs> yeah. No, that was funny. We could, we could repost that. But um, yeah, I, I went down hard. Like we, and we were just, you know, we were so cute. Like we were so cute and just like really wanted to do stuff. I was going to say, was I? Like, no, we, no, like our determination. Oh, we to, like, were cute. In zero like, degree weather yep. to be like, we're going to go film this and do this. And we went to like the state fair ice sculpture yeah. contest yeah. and the sledding and the ice skating and like man on the street during the ice sculpture contest like we really were we were out there we were like let's do this yeah and let me tell you <laughs> would you do that now no <laughs> <laughs> like like oh my god like let's go interview we're people now <laughs> in zero degree weather and ask them how mad they are and all of them are so nice they were so nice like all the people in minnesota were so nice yeah and also let's not forget that First of all, I was 19 or 20. Yeah, you were a child. Um, and you were 22 or 23. Yeah. And we had been told a week, a week before the Super Bowl, that we were going to host a Sirius XM oh, yeah. show. Facts. Every day on Sirius XM, okay? Yep. Oh we God. never hosted a radio show. First of all, I think I was the youngest radio host in Sirius XM history. Like, that's, yeah. like, that's insane. And then they said, okay. Now you're going to do it live in a bar in Minnesota. Yep. So every day yep. at that bar in Minnesota, we hosted Cowboy a Jacks, we did an live hour. radio show. A ra- just looking out with, at a bunch of dudes with so zero, we're waiting for our hour to be yeah. up. Zero experience. Like the chicks in the office hour was when the bar kind of cleared out a little bit and new people would come in so they could get a good seat for the next hour. Right. After. Exa- no, 100%. They, and they were kind. <laughs> We're like, you know? we were like, you know, when you go to a music festival and there's the main stage and then there's like a mm-hmm. side, the stage, side stage and there's yeah. always people that do go back and forth because yeah. they do want to see everybody. But like when this, when the act before the opening act at the side stage, everyone like leaves 30 minutes mm-hmm. early to like get to the main stage yeah. so they could get a good spot. Right. That was the Chase the Office us. hour radio. Cow- radio. Yeah. No, and it, it was almost calming because nobody was listening. Yeah. Like we were on the speakers <laughs> loud. And loud. yet... No one could hear us. No one. <laughs> that's what it felt like. It felt like we were just yelling into the abyss <laughs> and with zero experience at all. Uh, and you know what? 
seriously though like gr- great exposure yeah. and uh, exposure therapy they yeah, call it yeah, yeah and yeah. uh you know now we're here pushed us in the deep it end. did it did it was like here fucking go in and you got to just do it yeah and so it did teach us a lot but it's hilarious to look back on and then atlanta super bowl where we just interviewed like Diplo on the red carpet. Yeah. Like, w- I was looking back. That was my pictures. It was like us talking to Josh Allen and Sam Darnold. Yeah. Like, and like other things. <laughs> what? Yeah. And then I remember we were back at the uh, house in Atlanta and there was a rumor swirling that Waka Flocka was coming to smoke. Yeah. Do, you re- do you guys remember that? Yeah. It was like, we can't, we can't yes. leave. Waka Flocka is coming here to smoke a blunt with all of us. Yep. Waka Flocka never showed up to smoke a blunt yeah. with us, but we believed with our whole heart that remember, Waka Flocka was coming. Remember when we were in Minnesota and we went and got spray tans and we looked so <laughs> disgusting and we came back and Julian Edelman was just like in yes. the house and we were like, fuck! Yes. <laughs> yes! I was actually thinking about that the other day because I saw a video of Julian Edelman and Gronk and uh, Danny Mandola. Did yeah. you see that video yes, on TikTok? Yes. And I just, every time, see, every time I see Julian Edelman, I am brought back to us coming back from yeah. the spray tan and then standing in the kitchen with so much confidence making Annie's mac and cheese while Julian yeah. Edelman is sitting at the countertop. Like, go hide in a room <laughs> yeah, with your we're, filthy, we're smelly orange. spray yeah. tan so that Julian Edelman can't be disgusted with you and smell it. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You're making uh, mac and cheese with your smelly spray tan yeah, while yeah. Julian Edelman is sitting at the island? <laughs> go in a room you know we were and we were like stopped in our tracks one it was so icy we're like sliding down the driveway of the minnesota house we like we're like gonna fall we're in we're in giant pajamas because we're yeah, just, we just got, got a spray tan, tan. bras off like yeah. the whole, we're like oh hey everybody hey, nice to meet you yep. julian yep oh oh god funny stuff yeah funny that is really stuff. really we we really had some funny times yeah even not just the super bowl like i think back to um our first people's choice wards where we stayed we were this is like when we were trying to like not cost the company a lot of money which we still yeah you yeah, know yeah, we yeah. still yes. try yes, to not absolutely. do that um but we were like no it's no big deal we will share a room yeah. for seven days yeah 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 no. Wait, you shared a room? Me and friends shared a room. There was a long stint there where we to. first started traveling. Where And we did. We did. but Until like, we didn't. Yeah, until <laughs> it was like, this is a long time and we should have something. We should have our own. It's It was different when we were like doing houses and stuff. But when you're in a hotel and you're sharing a room for a long period of time, it's, it, it's close quarters. Yeah, and it's like... There's not an inch of break. Seven days. Yeah. You know, you get on each other's nerves. Well, we had to do it for the Amazing Race thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then so yeah. we were like, well, we just did it for the Amazing Race. We'll do it again. Right. Um, Just so funny. So many, so many funny stories. Oh, man. Good and times. Now, and now you head to Vegas for one night. Yep. <laughs> Exactly for the dozen, not for, even, for, not, for, nothing to do with us. Yeah. <laughs> Think about all the travel memories we'll make next month. We are. We're oh, gonna no, make yeah, a ton of travel yes, memories. Exactly. We are because we have some huge shows coming up, people. Guys, let's just talk about the fact. Now, first of all, I want to say thank yeah. you to all the guests that are joining the shows because the, I seriously can't believe like when it comes to like Christy Carlson, yeah. Ronan, and and Annalise, the fact that we grew up watching them on Disney Channel every day and then they're going to be on our live show guests, like that's insanity. Yeah. Matt and Rachel, who are always so kind, yep. they're awesome. Heather McMahon, who is just the funniest, yep. like that's going to be such a hilarious show in Atlanta. Please buy tickets. Yeah. Um, Craig Trent, and Austin. Craig and Austin, always a blast. Always. We are always having a blast with Craig and Austin. Trent, always yeah. a delight. Taylor Lautner. I know. The Tays. The, the Taylor Lautners. Yep. Tay the and Tay. Lautner. Taylor and Taylor. Being our LA show guests. Crazy. Mind blowing. We this was this was a pipe dream. We said when it we was. when we were planning picking out these shows, we had done LA for the Super Bowl. Yep. Um in 2021. Or it was 2022. 2022. 2022. And We'll be honest. We've talked about. It. We did not love. We did not love our show in yeah. L.A. It was Super Bowl week is just a weird week. People yeah. are there for different things. They are not there for a pop culture live show. This was just you know compared to our other live shows, didn't live up to those expectations. Yeah. So we were like, what? You know, we've we and I honestly blame I blame our own um, 
company for some of that. <laughs> for the live show? Remember they were the ones like talking. No, it was just because oh, well, like, when they we got told it, that Zach Efron was coming to the show? No, it was like, <laughs> and it was used as like a, uh, I mean, as it should, like it's a bar soul event, but it was used as like a networking event. So there were, there were just like a ton of clients yeah. and salespeople that just didn't really care to be. Well, also, the, our show. yeah, the people <laughs> here got yelled at because there was a yeah. lot of chit chatting. Yeah. Um, we didn't hear it, but apparently, ups- whatever. We weren't a part of that. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. That's what we heard through the grapevine. But when we were talking about doing LA again, we were like, listen, we've made so many, you know, great connections there. Like, should we give it another shot? Should we give it a go? And yeah. should we, should we, you know, sh- shoot our Call shot with, with the Taze? Yeah. And I DM them and was shocked at how quickly they it, said yes. They are just like I was like, no yeah. fucking way. I could not be more appreciative of all of these people who mm-hmm. like answered the phone immediately. Yeah, which is so kind and so generous because it is it is their time. It is so they are nice. giving us. Like, they don't have to and, do this, but they no, are. And and for ever all of them, like it is so we're so excited. Um, and yeah, I mean. We've said it so many times that they're probably almost like, all right, shut up. But like those two are two of the kindest people I have Mm -hmm. ever met. Yeah. (laughs) So that's like they made us feel comfortable enough to reach out to them to ask them. Exactly. Like Like, that's the relationship that we have already made with them because they have been so kind and generous to us that we have already already was like, oh, well, we could try to ask them. Right. Because if they weren't, then we would never have the balls. Exactly. To ask. But because they are so kind, you feel comfortable to be like, hey, would you do this? And they said yes and they're doing it. And we are... Ecstatic. so pumped and ecstatic and it's going to be an absolute blast and if you're thinking about you know flying out and and doing the whole trip do it it's la like why not make a weekend um, out of make it. a weekend out of it grab your gals get on get on the road and come to the show because i think it's going to be one to not miss yeah. all the shows i think are like you don't want to miss them so if we are coming to your city and you've been debating it you're thinking about it buy the tickets come see the show it's gonna be fantastic and we're gonna make a ton of great memories Agreed. and i cannot wait so tickets are in the link in the description and um on our social media so you can go find them there and we are so so pumped um thank you to everybody who has bought tickets already and we can't wait to see you guys so let's get into the rest of the show we are going to be talking about jacob Alordi and this um yeah, right. This producer, paparazzi. There's a, there's a whole situation going on. The story is very confusing. Yep. Taylor uh, Taylor Swift has, I almost said Taylor Watner. Yeah. Um, Taylor Swift has released the track Woo-hoo! list. Um, it's a fucking doozy I'm track excited list. to talk about it because it's just funny yeah. where it came from. Um, we are going to touch a little bit on The Bachelor and King Charles was uh, diagnosed. Major royal family yeah, news. Diagnosed with cancer. We'll talk about that. And we have a great interview with uh, Zara Larson, who was so much fun and I love listening yeah. to her talk. So She's hilarious. If you've seen her on social media, she's so funny and um, she lives up to the hype. Yes, she does. So we will get into the topics. We've all been there. I talk about a million times how hard it can be to secure good tickets to a concert, a sporting event, where you are constantly like, oh, I just want to see my favorite artist. Why is this so difficult? Well, Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. It happens all the time. So your favorite artist announces a new tour. You get super excited. Getting tickets is just so hard. But if you see something where you're, you're you wait on it you're like okay we'll see what happens i didn't get those tickets but i want to go i really want to go try and find that last minute deal game time is great because they have the last minute tickets the flash deals the zone deals is an easy way to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area because they are obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts it's the place to find last minute seats so find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football basketball baseball concerts comedy theater and more 
With zone deals, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHICKS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHICKS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Weird situation with Jacob Elordi going on. Yep. Now, the story I think started off differently than what it has become now. The story that was like spreading at first was Jacob Elordi was in an interview on, on a radio show and the radio show made a joke about salt burn and then Jacob Elordi threw the guy up against the wall and choked him. Yeah. That was the initial story spreading around. Right. Now I think it has changed. I don't really know if it has. Well, I think or at least that like that's what this guy is. No, but there but there have been more details that have come out that I think shows that this guy maybe was pressing him and like was in the wrong I heard or at least I mean I can't confirm this, but the video that I saw explaining it from like a pretty reliable source on TikTok. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Oh my god, is Jack McCarthy? No, 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 but it's uh it's like a a movie Jack McCarthy. I I said Jack McCarthy, not Jack Jack McCarthy, Jack Mac. Jack Max, Jack McCarthy. You Maguire. know, sometimes I really do think Jack Max's name is Jack McCarthy because it just makes more sense. Well, no. You want to know why you think Jack uh, Max's name Maguire. is Jack McCarthy? Yeah. Because Dave calls Jack McCarthy Jack Mac. Yeah. But nobody else calls Jack McCarthy, McCarthy Jack, Jack Mac. Mac. Yeah. Because Jack Mac is Jack McGuire. Right. Right. On TikTok. Jack Mac on TikTok. We're Completely. talking about a, a totally different Jack McCarthy who works Completely. here. Um, but like... Outside in the in the world, like Jack Mac makes more sense as a nickname for somebody named Jack McCarthy. But not, why not Jack McGuire? Because it's still the Mick. It's still the MC in the beginning. Yeah, I just the G throws me off. McGuire, like Jack Mag. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. I, I guess. I, I guess. Know. Huge shout out to Jack Mac. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. Huge, shout huge shout out to Jack Mac. Was it He's one been of a his day TikToks? One Jack Mac. Of he has, and also Jack Mac crushes it on TikTok. He, does. he always has. Was it news. one of his TikToks? No, no. Oh, oh, it's I, like, I thought you, you were know the mo- You know the one. movie TikTokers. Like, there's a few of them that you always see. They're always talking about movies. Yeah. It's one of those guys who like he knows what he's talking about usually. Yeah. So, Reliable, I'm just saying this is what I saw from. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's hundred percent true, but he was saying that. Jacob Elordi was just at a pub, yeah. like, and minding his own business, and this guy like followed him to the pub. Yes, and that's where, and then yes. like he was like, yeah, pressing him, and he's like, delete the footage that you already have. Yes, yeah. it's this guy. And that's I why think the story does... has changed because the original story that was going around was that ja- Jacob Elordi was in an interview, and yeah, he pr- and then just, just pushed right. this guy. Again. Like, picture Jacob Elordi sitting here, and Noah makes a joke, and Jacob Elordi goes over there to Noah and fucking pushes him against right. the wall. That's the story that was circulating at first, which is not. Now it's real. Was it? I the what, first story I saw was that he was outside of a hotel. No, the first story I saw was that he was sitting in a radio interview and like pushed pushed the producer. It's because Jesus. the okay. guy well, that's is definitely a radio, not what happened. on a radio show, but it was just it wasn't at the radio. Yeah, because so this that, guy is a radio. Yeah, that's why I think people were very confused at first. That's I was like, there's no way Jacob yeah. Lordy was sitting in an interview and then just fucking pushed this guy against the wall. So Joshua Fox from a local station in Sydney had heard that like Jacob was in Sydney and um, he went on the Kyle and Jackie O show and said that Jacob got upset when the internet jokester approached him outside the establishment to ask him on camera to fill an empty container with bath water. Kiss FM then played audio in which the Euphoria star could allegedly be heard asking not to be filmed. This guy told Kyle and Jackie that he agreed to stop because, quote, the joke didn't land. However, he claimed Elordi got right in his face and demanded he delete the recording. The polarizing media personality said he felt intimidated but refused because he wanted to preserve the footage as evidence of the alleged confrontation. According to Fox, the actor then flipped out, pushed him against the wall, and put his hands on his throat. The Sunday Telegraph previously confirmed that Fox did sustain that did not sustain any injuries in the alleged bus up, but did file a report from with the police. And they also have reported that Jacob was offended by the line, the questioning and obviously this guy getting in his face. And that's, uh, that's, that's what went down. So 
Yeah, I mean, it sounds like this guy is like an internet prankster. Mm -hmm. Like, runs up to people with a camera, shoves the camera in their face. Tried to do it with Jacob, and Jacob had, wanted, had uh, clearly no desire to be on camera. And let me tell you, I would be shitting my pants if I was this guy, because Jacob Elordi is so tall yes. that I Facts. would not want to mess with him. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't want to mess with him. Yep. And I think... If you are invading someone's life like that, like sometimes you're gonna get checked. Like yeah. you know, there it's gonna happen. You, right? Like you it's like you press someone on the wrong day. Totally. Never. And they might they might go Alec Baldwin on you. Right. You know, physical violence. Kill Alec Baldwin I think. <laughs> on you, like kill you? No, 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 no. I'm no, joking. No. I'm joking. <laughs> Jesus. I did not mean that. He, she was not and talking about the... My brain didn't act. even go there. She went to the streets of New York. I was talking about his paparazzi the, yeah, videos. Not the, not the <laughs> accidental discharge. Well, you know what? I'm actually glad you brought that up because people probably for a second thought that's what I was talking about. Yeah. No, Alec Baldwin is He's famously he, yeah. uh, mad at paparazzi. Yeah. Um, not that mad. <laughs> yes. No, but I, like I was, I was just saying that... Uh, physical violence you know it's never the answer it is never the answer but like but sometimes, sometimes people snap and if you you what's the saying play stupid games win stupid prizes play never silly games win. never heard that one no am i am i have anybody I've has never any, heard that no okay thank god I'm i've like, never heard it in so my i head, couldn't I'm pretend like, uh where it's like if you're if you're if you do this on the on the reg getting in people's faces with a camera Odds are somebody's going to snap yeah. eventually. Uh, just so happens that this one was Jacob Bellardi. Now, Jacob, as much as he is beloved right now, he does seem to have like a little bit of a toot. He's moody. He's a moody artist. You know? We talked about this recently. I did. And, and, he, and he's people moody. were upset with us because they really fucking love him. And I get it. And I do. I love him. Like, I yeah. think he's a, he is baby girl. <laughs> yeah. But he is moody baby girl. But he, I wouldn't want to be on his bad side. No, he, I would not. We, we've seen tons of videos where he has a toot and he's moody. And, yeah. And, you know, Jacob violence is not the answer. No. Um, but sometimes these people can be really annoying. But I still don't think that means violence but is like, the answer. But like when you when you just like take a step out of the scenario for a second and look at it really from a far away, mm -hmm. like what what do we do? <laughs> what are, what are we right? Do? Because when you're like, actually looking, imagine at this guy. He just comes up. He's like he's like pour water, pour your bath water in this jar, like scream it in your face. You're like, go, what, go away. Right, like did Jacob, I wanna know, did Jacob immediately resort to pushing him against the wall or did he, right. did he first say go away and the guy wouldn't go away? Right. Cause, oh, totally. Cause we need, there needs to be clarification There's here. no, um, I don't, there's no like factual information on that right now because the Fox, this guy, John Fox, he's the one talking. Mm -hmm. So it's like he's going to tell a story of like, oh, I, you know, I was just making he, a joke. I wanted to keep the cameras going because now I needed to like film this all incident happening like for evidence and whatnot. Yeah. So if he, if Jacob started off being like, hey, delete that, hey, delete that, hey, delete that, hey, delete that, hey, delete that. And the guy just continues to put the camera in his face. That would be pretty annoying. But uh, yeah. Yeah. These people can so be it's, really it's annoying. it's been taken up taken up with the police these people can be real annoying yeah also like you're gonna go to the police he must you be, know what i mean like he just be he must be real tired of the uh the bathwater jokes the bathwater jokes my question is like you got what you wanted you gotta live with it why why are you gonna go to the police now yeah you're gonna press charge <laughs> like you got you got your you your, your sound bites right right you got to right. you got to say, oh, Jacob already pushed me against yeah. the wall. What else do you want? It's the attention, clearly. He now he's uh, it's a whole thing. Yeah. Well, exactly. So that's a tough go for Jacob, obviously. And I think like normally, from what I can tell, he is a little bit more unbothered by the public. Like when he's in Australia, it feels mm -hmm. like you know he's home and he can kind of not live a totally the land normal down life under. <laughs> down under. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, if I was like, yeah. just say it. 
<laughs> like when I, when he's in LA, I feel like he's absolutely followed by paparazzo everywhere, yeah. paparazzi everywhere he goes. Hey, paparazzo. And in Sydney, maybe he's a little he, like they don't bother him as much. Besides this guy who decided to really fucking bother him, and he snapped. He snapped. Jacob snapped. God forbid. Thank God the guy didn't ask about the kissing booth. <laughs> oh my god, the guy would be in the hospital. Yeah. We'd have a real problem. Then. Yeah, he might not be here. <laughs> he uh, really may have Alec Baldwin him. Yeah, yeah. So no, I, that one, <laughs> that was not right. That was not right. So yeah, Rhea. I mean, they, they, he, he, the police report was filed. I feel like this is something that they will settle outside of like a. I, I can't see this going much farther. I, you, you feel like you dropped this, but I don't know. I don't yeah. know. Maybe this guy gets real persistent. Oh but. God. It, 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 like a bug yeah you know what i mean i mean and, and to, he went on he went on the biggest like this is clearly making waves here but also in Aus- like the kyle and jackie o show is the top of the top radio shows in, mm-hmm. in australia so the people are talking yeah they are all right moving on taylor swift released her track list oh for baby the tortured poets department now this got leaked on tiktok before it was released yeah and when we saw the leaking, thought, no. I thought, no fucking chance are they the na- these are the names of the songs because the songs to me were like the name. Oh, sorry, my God! You know when you get indigestion, yeah, it yeah. takes you out. Yep. Um, the songs to me, when I read the titles that were leaked, I was like, these are so openly about Joe that there's no way these are right. the names of the songs. Right. And- I believe some there was a text in the chicks in the office group <laughs> chat that was like. Fortnite by Post Malone. Ha 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 ha. Impossible. Yeah. Im- Im- impossible. Also, like, Down Bad. I yeah. was like, there's no way Taylor Swift's naming a song Down Bad. These are, like, that doesn't scream poetry to the me. The names of these songs are just, like, they're so pointed, but also, like, kind of trendy in a way that Taylor's never done before. Yeah. That is very... So let's read them. Okay, so we start off, we got... Uh, Fortnite featuring Post Malone, not spelled like the video game, but you know yeah. that was the poet. The poet spelling yeah. of Fortnite. Yes, the tortured poets department is track two. Track three, my boy only breaks his favorite toys. Track four, down bad. Track five, so long London. Track six, but daddy, I love him. Track seven. I wish you did not put this sideways. Fresh out the slammer. Why don't you just turn your phone and go because, like this? Because I have my stupid lock thing is not is No, but not you don't unlocked. have to do that. No, but when I... No, it, I'm not even... Mine is locked. I'm saying my phone's oh. not locked is my problem. When okay. I turn it, it turns. Do you want Florida, me to read Florida! Exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. Featuring Florence the Machine. I think I'm the like most excited about that one, low-key. <laughs> Guilty as sin. Who's afraid of little old me? I can fix him. Parentheses. No, really, I can. L-O-M-L, love of my life. I can do it with a broken heart. The smallest man who ever lived. The alchemy. Clara Bow. Bonus track. The manuscript. Now these song titles to me scream, this is about you. Yeah, this is, this is, we... Hey, Has, Joe. We thought Midnight's was a breakup album. This is a breakup album. Well, that's what I said on Monday. Yeah. I said people thought that Midnight's was the breakup album. This is going to be the breakup album because it is so, hey, these songs are about you. Yeah. So long, London. So long, London. Uh, I, can I can fix, fix him. him. No, really, I can. I could do it with a broken heart. That's yeah. what she gets on stage after they just broke up. She's these doing sound the like Ariana Grande song titles. Totally. Honestly, they do. So true. Um, down bad. Down bad. The smallest man who ever lived. Now, people are putting things together. So, But Daddy, I Love Him is from The Little Mermaid. Yes. And the, but Daddy, but Daddy, I the, love him. The story, you know, Ariel loses her voice for a man. Yep. So, was... Taylor, was she silent or was she silenced? Yes. There's um, also uh, multiple photos that have gone viral of Harry Styles in a shirt that says, but yeah. daddy, I love I him. just don't think that Taylor Swift is still writing songs about Harry Styles. No, this, no, I don't think age. it, I don't, I don't, that wouldn't say like the song is about Harry Styles. I just feel like this, the, the underlying sentiment is the same, you know? Yeah. Um, Florida. So the first show after the breakup was announced was Tampa. So people are like, is she, is this going to be a happy song about Florida right. or a bad song about Florida? Uh, love my life, obviously. So long London. 
Um, I mean, honestly, so much. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. Yeah. Like, the, what is what? Oh man, she. Joe must have been looking over his shoulder for so long already, <laughs> and it's like. Did you, you just s- never know the direction it's going to go in? And she just went full all in. Did you see the Daily Mail article about from Joe's source? No, I did not. But that already sounds like something I don't believe. Um, so <laughs> Taylor Swift's ex Joe Allen feels it would be shady for pop star to diss him in new album, but is already concerned about what she could reveal because of his undeniable reference to him in title. Mm. Now, there were some quotes in here that were tough the insider said taylor knocked him for the name of this when they were together talking about the group chat she didn't want people to think that it had anything to do with her so when he spoke about it she was of course bothered i get that yeah your your boyfriend's out there saying he's in a group chat it's called the torture man club right you know could be taken the wrong way the insider continued, Joe has no reason to believe yet that she's going to diss him or their relationship. She writes about her past using code and points of reference. It may just be that she's reflecting on their time together and he's hoping it is nothing more. If it is a diss album, that is shady. He helped her with songwriting on her past album, so it, re- it will really come as a shock to him if she talks about their breakup, as, as it is something he's not spoken of all. Regardless, God, I don't no, no, no. a single word this, of this. Get this line. Regardless of what she does, he will still not respond because he has removed himself from her narrative and yeah. is very glad he did. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what? Who? What? Who, this is what is this? Joe Alwyn's barber who <laughs> sold this story to the jail, to the Daily Mail. Yeah, insanity. No, no that removed himself from the narrative. No, that's because made obviously up. that's a call back to yeah. I would like to be excluded from this narrative that yeah, I never yeah, asked yeah. to be a part of. Yep. And now is very happy he no. did. It's crazy. I find that whole thing to be bullshit, honestly. Um, this like, because you you have to know, like that person said, Joe has worked on music with her in the past. He knows what kind of artist she is. Also in the article, it said like Joe won best album. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> because Jesus. he wrote on the <laughs> yeah took I mean, home his win for best album. They yeah. wrote. Yep, 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 yep. Crazy. Well, you know, she's not holding back, clearly. I'm hoping that there's kind of, I don't know. It obviously seems very breakup-y, but at the same time, I'm like, maybe we, maybe there's like a couple Travis moments thrown in here. Well, she also said they've been working on this for two years, and when she said, yeah, when she took years. that pause on stage and said, I've been keeping the secret for two years, I thought it was kind of like a nod, like a, yeah, we've actually been like thinking about breaking up for right, two right. years. It's been a long time. Um, we've had it was pro- a long yeah, time yeah, coming. Yeah. And, you know, maybe they tried fixing it and they had their back and forth. And I think that was a little nod, like, yeah, this has been in the works for two years totally. because we have been broken up for way longer than you guys think. Yeah. Which makes me think that, damn, I, you know, how many the Travis songs must be in a whole whole nother spot. Well, maybe this will be, you know, wipe her hands clean. She yeah. puts out this breakup album. Gets, you know, Joe out. Yeah. And then after that is a beautiful love album. Like we already said, this woman does not sleep. How many, like, she's just writing songs all the time. Like, she In just head, has. She must just be. It's a constant flow. She must just be sitting on millions. Now, it is funny because I, I was thinking about this yesterday, but Jordan texted it to us. We went on, we went on Circle Time, Kelsey Kreppel's podcast, mm-hmm. like the end of last year-ish. And that it came out a couple weeks ago, and we were doing pop culture predictions, and I forgot I even said it, but I was like, I think Taylor Swift's gonna have a new album pretty early on in the year, and Kelsey was like, Oh, I don't know about a new album, like probably a re-record. I said, No, I think a new, a full wow. new album. Yeah, that was crazy. No, I went in more of the direction that like I was like, You don't think she has the songs about Travis, like yeah. ready to go? Little did I know she had the the vault of of Joe songs that have yet to be unleashed. Yeah. And I think she's going to wipe her hands clean with it, which was yep. a great call by you. And I think she's going to wipe her hands clean of it. And it's also April 19th is the day, um, the, was it the Revolutionary War? Yeah. So, Started or was it now? No, like I think it was, it was the day that they, that. Um, the war began? 
Th- was Something the ended? war ended? I think. Now I'm no history buff. Yeah. The first shots of the American Revolution oh. occurred on April 19th, <laughs> 1775. Sorry. We were um, taking shots across the pond, baby. Yeah, sorry. Not ended. Yeah. No history buff Opposite, here. actually. Yeah, started. So this started. is the start of our yeah. takedown of Joe Allen. I was going to yeah. say wipe hands clean, but maybe just yep. getting started. Yep. Just taking down all of... Now, I love London, so can, so, so long London... Uh, so long London might hurt you know yeah but maybe she needed to write that one too because I feel like she did fall in love with London as like a place right now to she be might have to just be yeah like, she's just not there anymore it's right. like so long so long London yeah and it's and it is track five which we know stands to be her most emotion songs always fall on track five so yeah but so, damn very exciting now so exciting. I was gonna say why, okay if you have it why can't we get it sooner but the date now, yeah, you know, yeah. makes clearly yeah. there's a day for there's a date right. for everything. I know, because now honestly, like anytime she announces a new album or new, like I just, I live in the world where I'm like, because she's done it before. Where it's like, bam, here it is. <laughs> right. That like, would have been cool if on the Grammy she's like, albums out now. Yeah, albums out tonight at midnight. Yeah. That would have been fantastic. Yeah. yeah, but you know, a build up is is smart too. So yeah, I could see I, I, either way it would it it works, but I think everyone just wants it now. So that's we're just selfish. This time of the year can get overwhelming. You know, maybe you have those New Year's resolutions that you're still trying out, or maybe they faded, or maybe you got overwhelmed, or maybe there's a lot of things right around the corner. You're looking at the year ahead, and your and your head is scrambled, and you just want to find those right coping mecha- mechanisms. And maybe you've thought about giving uh, therapy a try, but you haven't taken that plunge yet. You don't know where to start. Sometimes it could be hard to find a therapist. Sometimes it could be expensive to find a therapist. But what if I told you, you can try therapy online with better help. It's helpful for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries, and it can empower you to be the best version of yourself. Um, it, you know, it doesn't matter how big or small or however you see your problems in your life. Therapy is for everyone. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, you can give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. You can become your own soulmate whether you're looking one for one or not with therapy. So visit betterhelp.com slash office today to get 10% off your first month. If you're thinking about therapy, get, give it a try online. You don't need to drive anywhere. Maybe that's what's stopping you. You could do it all entirely online. You could chat. You could do video. Um, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash office. So visit betterhelp.com com slash office today to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp help dot com slash office while we're on the topic of the uk i guess we could just touch on the fact that um king charles big news uh big news now he was he had emergency surgery i think it was last week right yeah he had to have surgery for an, an enlarged prostate i mm-hmm. believe and the the Family did put out a statement that he was having the surgery. And then, you know, when he got out, it was like the surgery went well. And then it came out this week that while doing the procedure, they did find something mm-hmm. that uh, has led to the cancer diagnosis. Now, in typical royal family fashion, everything is very tight lipped. We don't know. They haven't publicly said, like, any more details than that. There have been some reports that it they have caught it early on um but you know like i said that's it's we don't know and it's like it's there's reportedly the rumors are saying that his prognosis is good they caught it early uh and he will be receiving regular treatments to treat the cancer um but it is interesting because of all the divides in the family and the rumors and the turmoil and who's not talking to who and Harry hasn't been there and they're not still not talking to him all these things the story it's still so ongoing but after this happened this week Prince Harry did go to the UK 
which, you know, it is his father, so it makes sense. But as far as the public's known, they've had a very strained relationship. Yeah. So uh, page six wrote, Prince Harry jetted off to the UK to be by his father, King Charles' side. Following the monarch's cancer diagnosis, the Duke of Sussex was seen pulling up to a private terminal at LAX on Monday. Um, Harry, who traveled without his wife, Meghan Markle, touched out at Heathrow Airport in London on Tuesday before making, quote, a quick visit to Clarence House to see Charles in the afternoon. We exclusively reported earlier Monday that he was planning to visit his dad, well, was planning to visit his dad after Buckingham Palace announced Charles' cancer battle. Uh, and that he would travel and that his, uh, his Meghan and the two kids would stay at home. So, yeah, now, you know, regardless how you feel about King Charles, it's obviously very sad. Yeah. It's a very concerning family matter. And, you know, they, like you said, they are tight lips. So I don't know how much details uh, we are going to get. Yes. But, the you know, we know that the British tabloids love to speculate yes. on what's so I'm just, you know, depends on where you do your reading. You mm -hmm. could probably be getting like eight different stories. Yeah. <laughs> More speculation to come. Yeah. Um, but I will say, like, in the sense of. Not necessarily like it is such a sensitive subject, but if this is something that could bring the family together in in a way, I would like to see that. That would be you know nice. Like um, if it's, it's op sad. opening the conversations, yeah. but sometimes for that Harry happens. To be you know included in the in in family matters if yeah. he wants to be if they right. you know whatever it's they obviously have their feelings mm -hmm. about harry and everything he said and done so but this is like you know it's when at the end of the day like this is a a cancer diagnosis for a, yeah. a, your father like right. you want to be so, there right and sometimes things like this can open people's eyes to different things yeah. you know so yep 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 we will see yep we're gonna touch on the bachelor um third episode monday night and really the main focus i think we want to talk about yeah. is the drama that has unfolded between sydney and maria and now this drama is the dumbest drama i've ever seen on the show and for some reason is making its way to social media now. yeah yeah why like the fact that maria has i mean it been always is because this is the only drama that's happening yeah. like there's no other drama to even be like, for the discourse to be on anything else, it can't... This is all that's happening on the episodes. Well, like, everything else is going so smoothly, and that, no, that's, I'm not, like, this I'm is No, I'm not it. talking about the discourse. I'm talking about the the people involved, a.k.a. Oh, yeah, Sydney, yeah, making yeah. videos about it. Like, yeah. that is where I'm like, you're still stuck on this? Right. The season's ended. How long have you been gone? Yeah. And you're making videos about this is wild to me. Like, I, I just don't think Maria has done anything wrong. I know. And is now put into a shitty situation where she has to defend herself for not doing anything wrong yeah yeah it it felt like a hell of a spin i will say like i don't really know like like i said i, I said this during cutting stems but it really seems like sydney loves these buzzwords and and she's using Queen them and she's on of buzzword dictionary honestly like there is something a little comical about get ready with me to talk about gaslighting <laughs> like you're like i'm sorry what what are we doing like Someone you're going to do your makeup all while you tell us what the definition of gaslighting is in a way that you're saying you were gaslit in a situation, but were you even really gaslit in a situ situation? And now it like, kind of feels like you're gaslighting us. Yeah, like it was about yeah. the situation. Yeah, yeah. Like there, it just when somebody overuses those words. Yeah, you can tell that they're kind of weaponizing it against you. You know yeah. what I mean? Like sometimes people like weaponize those buzzwords. Yeah, and they're like. Let me just throw it out and see what sticks, yep. you know, like one of the bullying, like, because what we watched was, you know, verbally attacked, verbally attacking, bullying. Yeah. Those things did not take place. Bullying right. and, and was... verbally attacking happens yeah, it, in life. Yeah. It happens and people have to deal with that. And it could be really unfortunate. It could be really mean. What she was yeah. experiencing was not bullying. It really felt like Sydney kind of inserted herself also in a drama that had nothing to do with her like really the first the conversation was maria and medina mm -hmm. and sydney jumped in and then when maria and medina were trying to have a conversation about it at the group date sydney was like well i also felt bullied by you and it was like what this has nothing to do with you like it's so just I, not a bully I situation like i don't understand crying bullying i know not i bullying. understand maria getting frustrated and maybe like raising her voice but like they're trying she's trying to have a conversation and get an explanation for what they're doing and why like now it's going to affect her relationship with joey 
And I don't know. At the end of the day, I really just felt like Sydney just does not like Maria. And that's really where this is coming from. Because even like Sydney kept using like these words talking to Joey that was like, when did Maria even say these things? Like we did not see this. Maybe it happened off air. I don't know. But that's the big drama happening on The Bachelor. It's going to end up being we're getting a two on one next week between these two. Hopefully Joey can see right through and knows that Maria is in the right here. I feel like Maria, she has a strong personality and that can be intimidating for some people. But to like, you know. I just feel like you can always tour like it's just really bizarre to me like just because you get into an argument with somebody or you disagree with them does not mean they're bullying you like yeah that is just like I also just think that you can really gauge how ridiculous a, a drama is like on The Bachelor when like by how all the other girls are reacting right like sometimes if something's really bad like all the other girls have the same sentiment mm-hmm. and they're saying it and they're like oh well what maria did was really wrong and we all think that too and like whatever and really we haven't heard from any of the other girls besides some of them being like this is dumb like edwina had multiple interviews where she was like i just think you know Maria is is super honest and it can be maybe it's like maybe you just it's more like a brace like more like an abrasive personality kind of thing but she's like there's no this is not like a fight like this shouldn't be a thing Mm -hmm. and if she's saying that too I feel like probably a lot of the other girls felt uh felt that same way and it just got like carried on a lot. So other that that's the big drama happening. Other than that, Joey had like other really nice dates, and he's got some great yeah. girls. He's and moving through it smoothly. Exactly. And so now he just has to deal with a, a with the two on one. So that that'll be coming next week. Yeah. But that's really the big and hopefully big stuff on the Bachelor. Right. And hopefully we you know we know like if Joey know well the thing is Joey's not seeing what's in the house. Yeah. yeah so yeah. us watching it, we're yep, like, what? Yep. Come on. But hopefully he figures it out. Yeah. Um, All right. That wraps up the topics. This interview is presented by Coors Light. When you're juggling work, family, and life in general, things can feel chaotic. That's why Coors Light helps you find moments to reset and refresh all year long. Whenever you need to hit reset, reach for Coors Light. It's made to chill. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. So maybe you're headed into this weekend. It's here, guys. It's time for the big game, which means you're hanging out with friends. You're excited. You're watching. Make sure you are locked in with your Coors Light. You can get it sent straight to your door, which is so easy. So when you reach into your fridge before the game starts, you see those blue mountains. You're ready to go. That beer is cold. It's delicious. So when it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer we reach for. So when you want to hit reset, grab the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash chicks. And always celebrate responsibly from Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. All right, everyone. We are here with a very special guest. We have music superstar Zara Larson (laughs) in studio. In studio. It's yes. so nice. I know. It's fun when we get people to come and yeah. chat in the real... Mm-hmm. We, we we made this whole room and everything, you know? Yeah. No, and, I like it. It's um, always better than, than a Zoom. Exactly. Yeah. We, we like to make yeah. it cute for you. Mm-hmm. you and know? still it's post... Very cute. Like, post-pandemic, we definitely get people still. They're like, oh, they're only available on Zoom. Right. And we're like, oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah. Look how cute this studio it is. Don't want to come it sit is. on? I really enjoy it. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining us. You look comfy, cozy. Yep. And yep. also very cute. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how are you feeling? We are in album release yes. week. Yes. I feel Nervous, weirdly, excited. weirdly calm. Good. Like, so <laughs> calm. I'm like, oh, I'm releasing an album, which is strange because usually, I mean, there's still a couple of days to go yeah. as we're like recording this. But um, usually by now I will call my manager and I'll be like, pull the thing, pull the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be like, what have I done? Like, I don't feel like yeah. I, I just get so nervous because yeah. it's 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 just about releasing control over something mm-hmm. that you worked on for such a long time and now just have to let it out in the world and like you know see it fly hopefully and um 
yeah it's just it's just nerve-wracking to see what people will think about it and how people will react to it and if i'm still happy with like there's just so many emotions going on but right now i just feel so calm i feel very confident mm -hmm. i just feel like i've done i've done an amazing album i feel free no anxiety just like back to the roots of where I first started making music and it was just about like putting stuff out because I wanted people to hear my songs, having fun, yeah, like really having fun mm -hmm. with it, making the songs, singing the songs, performing the songs. So that's kind of where I'm at, just having like fun and being free with it. Yeah. Because you have been making music for so long, do you feel like you've entered eras where maybe you weren't having so much fun and you weren't mm. feeling so free mm -hmm. and now you've reached that point again? Yes, exactly. I feel like my previous album, Poster Girl, which is a, an amazing album, but like creating it, I felt so pressured from coming off of So Good, which did which did really, really yeah. well commercially and like in streams and that. And uh, I just felt so stressed about how do I live up to what I've previously released and how will people um, like what will other people think about it which is of course something that you think of as an artist and whatever you release like I think my audience um, reactions are important but at the same time it can't be it can't be everything and it can't be what dictates how and what you create but I felt like I, I was really really stressed about that um, and now it's just kind of like back to the no pressure mm -hmm. and just like having fun with it um, I don't really know exactly how I did that or how it <laughs> like that, it just, just relief <laughs> came over me like, <laughs> yeah but it's, I think it was intentional like mm. very intentional and just let's do what I think is is good and amazing I think it's also a, a bit a, a bit of it is just growing up and maturing and realizing that I don't know life is life is long but life is short and I get to do what I love mm. yeah every single day and um, really intentionally try to also be grateful for that, I think has helped a lot in just the process right. of creating it. And I think it made the album better. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. It's, it's has, I mean, obviously you're the one, you're the one creating it. So you're where you are at mentally mm -hmm. shows yeah. through it. How long what, has Venus been in the works? I would say two years. Okay. Yeah. It's a long time and mm -hmm. re you're mm -hmm. ready to let it fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I saw you talking somewhere about how you own like your masters, yeah. copyright. I feel like that's such an interesting conversation and not many people know the ins and outs of what right. goes on. So, can you explain to us how you even got to that point? Yeah. And is it a bit of a relief when you are releasing new music that you own. Mm, yeah, no, totally. I mean, this happened to me because I was signed to an like indie label in Sweden who are licensing my music through Sony. And uh, I signed when I was 14 and then my contract was up basically. So I wasn't really with them anymore um, with 10 records in Sweden. And um, Ole Håkansson, who started the, the record company, was kind of selling it off like he is such a legend in the Swedish record industry and uh, he's done like his part he's a around 80 years old uh, right now and he was like if I'm gonna sell all this like the publishing and the 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 masters and just everything off I just want to ask you directly do you would you like to buy your masters would you like to own your music and um, for me it was such an obvious yes yeah, yeah. And a lot of people don't get that opportunity or chance. Um, but he was also in the very, you know, in the middle of like the whole Taylor Swift thing mm -hmm. that I think we've all seen, yeah. even though some people might not realize like what it's actually about. It's like her, you know, um, because she wrote all the songs, she has the, the right to the songwriting, but she didn't have, she didn't own the records. Mm -hmm. So that's why she can like re-record re yeah. mm -hmm. them. Um, but he was just absolutely, he, he was like, that's a nightmare. I would never want to be that type of person who uh, would do something like that to an artist because it's, it's just not nice. Like, yeah. it's yeah. just not. And uh, he just asked me if I was interested. And uh, it did take a long time to, 
you know, figure out like the the perfect deal because I'm still signed to Sony. Mm. Um, and uh, it was a lot of like meetings back and forth and a lot of contracts and lawyers. And, and, and eventually we came to a really good agreement. And uh, now I can finally say that, you know, speaking of the publishing, I have songs that I... I did it because when I started my career, I, I wasn't a writer. Like I wish I was, I just wanted to sing. I just yeah. wanted to perform. So even the songs that I didn't write, but are that are a very big part of my identity as an artist, I feel like now has a home and has a safe place with their mommy. Yeah. And yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and they can yeah. like yeah. live there. Yeah. And I can decide what's going to happen mm -hmm. with them and to them. And if uh, somebody asks for my songs in a commercial or for sampling or for so like whatever it is, it's just nice to know that it's it's up to me. Yeah, it's all in your control. It's yeah. all in my control. And um, it's also just a nice little like, I see it, I see it as a retirement fund. Mm. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. yeah. When people sell their, their unique yeah. 401k. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was going to say, that's an interesting take on a 401k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, when people sell like their catalogs, they sell mm -hmm. all their music. Mm -hmm. Now, is that, I don't understand right. because it's like, now is that something you could do, but why would you? Right. You know? I think it depends on like the cash flow of right. things. Because right. if you want to sell your catalog, I mean, we've seen some artists sell it for, uh, 200 million yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying that's yeah. such a huge number that or even 100 million or whatever it is it's such a big number that they might feel like oh getting this huge amount of money just directly i can just have it and then invest it in other things mm -hmm. and the cash yep. flow of that will be bigger than because it is an investment right. you know right. and a lot of these like records owning a lot of investment yeah. properties yeah yeah you, you know what i mean you know, you so a lot of these sell all of them to yeah. Just, yeah these records also are being bought up by like companies who are not interested at all in music you know they're just yeah. like um investment companies yeah. Yeah. who would buy music because it is an investment yeah. Yeah. and they have nothing to do with creativity they have nothing to do with any sort of like the music industry right. but it's just it's an investment so i guess for them for the really um I think Justin Bieber, I think Justin yeah. Timberlake, yeah, Timberlake, Katy Perry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, I think they just get Disney, such a yeah. huge number yeah. that at that point, it just makes sense, yep. you know? Mm -hmm. But I, uh, luckily, or <laughs> didn't yeah, yeah. have to like <laughs> buy my, <laughs> I didn't have to buy my uh, master's for 200 million. Right. Yeah. So for me right now, like it makes the most sense to have that as an income, mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? But we'll see, we'll see in, 20 years like yeah. Yeah. retirement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah growing up in sweden it seems like just reading about you that you were always very like creative creative schools yeah surrounded by creative people what yeah. was that like and when did you realize like wow i i i'm gonna do this as a career because it was all you were very young mm -hmm. i've always had that yeah like just like this um, I don't really know where it comes from. I've tried to search for it a lot in myself. Like, how did this come about? I'm not from a musical family or a family that cares at all about um, any sort of like spotlight lifestyle. Yeah. But I have just always felt like someone who loves to um, entertain people. And I think the older I get, I realize that deep down, I just wanna connect with people. Like, I just wanna have, I don't know, that's why I love to to, to do live shows because you can mm. see the people in the crowd yeah. and you get, you get to uh, create that moment with people. Um, but yeah, it was really incredible for me growing up, surrounded by like-minded um, friends. And um, the majority of my like school career I spent at the Royal Swedish Ballet School. So it wasn't like a singing school or a musical school at all. We were dancing a lot. But a lot of my friends, you know, they did shows at the opera or they did other sort of like performances. A lot of people in my class did sing and they were, I don't know if you know what Eurovision is. Yeah. yeah. So it was like a kid's version of that and yeah. some people were in that. And so people were just, you know, performing. Right. Mm -hmm. And very supportive of each other. It was never any type of jealousy or any type of like, you know, try to bring each other down. It was super uplifting. We were all, I think we were like three boys in my class. 
Uh, we were all just girls. Mm -hmm. Everybody was sitting. We were rearranging the school cafeteria, so everyone would sit at like one table. It was just a very like sisterhood type of um, feeling, and I think that shaped me a lot and just shaped me and my confidence and um, just like pursuing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I've I've never had a plan B. I've just never seen anything else for myself um and i think i've just and it, it definitely not in a cocky way but just waking up every day and just being like i'm gonna do this like i'm gonna yeah, do this yeah. just subconsciously telling yourself that you are talented like you are good you are capable um was just something that has always i've never i've never put doubt in myself um feeling that for the first time like anxiety or doubt I think it was like when I made poster girl mm -hmm. or um a bit older and I realized ooh, sometimes things don't go right as planned yeah and and but before that it was just like a very straight road mm -hmm. like straight road nothing can stop me and uh, I do think that you are the you are the creator and the director of your life like you know what i mean yeah um not only the observer and like the cameraman but also what you tell yourself and like what you believe i think is what you capture mm -hmm. when you you know yeah do do you remember that day when you were first signed or wh where were you were you in school what your people in your lives reactions were yeah, I mean, getting signed is such a interesting thing because really you just kind of sign a paper. Right. It's not like you win a huge competition <laughs> yeah. and everyone's like, oh, oh my God, you're a winner. But you did win I the did competition. Win. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> That's why it's like, yeah. You already won, so it's yeah. like signing. <laughs> but for, you just like sign a bunch of papers yeah. and then you're like, cheers with some like sparkling like soda or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was just the, the the beginning of like, okay, boom, let's go. Yeah. Like, we're doing this. And I was still very young when I got signed. I was 14. And uh, it took a lot of convincing them to be like, I'm not too young. Like, I'm not, I'm serious. I'm serious business. You know, it was because they were a bit, a little bit on the fence, 10 records at first, because 14 is still very young. Yeah. But I wanted That's to be- That's why you emphasize sparkling so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was it was exciting. It was a really big day. But then, of course, the work, the work kind of starts after that. You know, you're signed and then it's like, OK, let's get to work. Let's let's get in the studio. Mm -hmm. Let's release some songs and do videos. Um, but it was a really, really fun time in my life. Yeah. Definitely. Now genres have kind of like melded and there's different sounds. Mm -hmm. But at that time, like was the dream to be pop star like mm -hmm. I feel like you just scream pop star mm -hmm. you know <laughs> I don't think I even thought of like when you're young do you think a lot about genres I don't think you do I think no I just think you're, you you're you just know what you know you yeah. just know yeah. what you know yeah. exactly and back in the days also it was a little bit it was more limited to what you would listen to I guess uh, comparing today because yeah. now you have all the songs in the mm -hmm. whole world in your phone like back in the days uh you would go and like buy a record you know at the record store which is so cute yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. like it's so cute how we yeah. used to do that you know? you, yes. now everything's on tiktok you, and, have, you yeah. know you you have like all the all the songs and all the genres but yeah i would just you know you would go in you would put the headphones on you would like listen through an album you'd be like okay cool that's cool like i want to get that i want to get that but most of the albums that i was just obsessed with i actually got as um like birthday presents or christmas mm -hmm, presents yeah. like the beyonce yeah. album christina aguilera um celine dion i had a madonna one i had a like you know those things and they went like crazy in my house yeah. mm -hmm. so it was very much like right into the boom box <laughs> yeah yeah <Yep. laughs> <laughs> very much like one you know i was obsessed with beyonce's b-day mm -hmm. and uh, she had this like deluxe where she would have the the music on one cd and then she, on the other cd she would have like all her videos so it was kind of like a visual album yeah. back yeah. at that point like a dvd mm -hmm. and i would just watch these videos over and over and over and that's when i realized like the dancing part of 
a, a performer like who was also a singer i was like yep yeah like that's that, what i want to yeah, do that's mm-hmm. what i want to do i want that to be a big part of who i am because i was also dancing so much growing right, up right um and uh, she she just took my soul and my heart, yeah. Beyonce. <laughs> she still got it. Yep, yep. She still she got does. it. And uh, and yeah, just growing up with that, and just like I've definitely had my ten thousand hours in the mirror, performing, just like pretending mm. I'm on stage. <laughs> growing up. Yeah. Now you said you you spent a lot of time dancing. When did you realize you had a great voice? Um. I think I've realized that I could sing quite early on because singing is so, it's so primal. Yeah. It's so, it's something that just kind of happens to to all of us. Mm-hmm. Like it just, it makes you, you feel good. You just get good. it or you don't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. and, <laughs> or, or that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, you know. most of us don't. <laughs> well, because there, but it still feels good. That you, yeah, and they're still, like, it, it feels, feels amazing. amazing. It still Absolutely. feels good. And, but and you see so many people who have like they're like oh no I have the home videos of of three years old and I am perfectly on key right? yeah. Like, yeah yeah I didn't sound like that it's yeah no, no. no. I, I have the just, videos but I didn't sound and, like and that. I always say like why stop doing something you love just because you're bad at it you know true, what I'm saying true like, but I also think like growing up it's so easy for parents or friends to be like you're so good because right. either you, you're right though you either yeah. got it or you don't and mm-hmm. then you could practice it and you yeah. can get mm-hmm. a lot a lot better you could really really become like so much better. But um, that like have a good pitch and just having like a good uh, voice is something that you could hear quite early on. So I think just me like liking to sing and then my parents would be like, you're amazing you know but they were like is she is she amazing because she's amazing or because she's our child like right. <laughs> you know? yeah. 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 Um, but then it's just so easy to be um yeah like applauded when you're a kid who like is a good singer i think mm-hmm. and then you just keep doing it because people appreciate you for it and like i i love the feeling of singing i just it just makes you feel good it's almost like a spiritual thing it's like it makes me feel happy it makes me feel um empowered and uh it is just a really powerful thing so i think it's easier to see a talent in 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 singing and maybe even dancing but it's hard you know if you want to be like an actress i guess you could always be like a little bit of a clown and like Mm. to entertain people and that but it's not very like many children who would like i'm gonna do a shakespeare monologue and their parents are like she's amazing exactly Exactly. you could be a theater kid but the the singing and dancing part is so it's like with us from the start almost. Mm, yeah. So I think I just continued because people are like, woo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, are you still spending your time in Sweden? Yeah. Are you in LA as well? Mm-hmm. Is it a little bit I of I feel both? like I'm everywhere. Really? Yeah. A lot in LA, a lot in Stockholm. Those are like my two mm-hmm. main places. And then London a lot. And then... Um, just like touring here you know i'm here now for like a couple of days and then i'm it's it's a lot of of um of traveling i must say which i really enjoy it was so weird during that like covid period yeah where it was like oh my god i get to stay in one place for longer than two months right like that has not really happened to me since i was 15 16. that's mm-hmm. crazy like it was so insane were you in stockholm or yeah. Were, yeah 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 were so you like itching to travel again or did you enjoy that a little time? bit yeah little I, bit I think it was I think it was annoying because none of us knew like when is things mm-hmm. gonna be like normal if yeah. they would have said like it's gonna be like this for a year now I would have been like okay cool right yeah. like, all right and I was like maybe next month yeah, yeah. maybe next month yeah, exactly. maybe next month but I did I did miss the airport I did <laughs> miss, I did miss you know going with my bags yeah. and <laughs> it's just uh you get used to it but it, it was really nice to just spend time with my family mm-hmm. and my boyfriend and my yeah. friends and just kind of feel like oh wow like this is also what life could be right which is so different yeah but very very nice to have some sort of like um norm like schedule right. a little bit yeah routine routine and now yeah. back yeah. to craziness yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Now, new now, album promo yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah everything i do enjoy that a yeah. lot and yeah. i i feel like you're loving tiktok too oh, God. 
Yeah. I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't need. I turned off my screen time. I'm like, yeah. I don't want to see it. Right. Like, don't send me yes. updates. It's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> love hate relationship. Yeah. Um, because you're an you're an entertainer in multiple forms. Yes. Yeah. Because you are very funny. Very I'm very funny. Yeah. And it was a while ago that um, the the video of you talking about talking in the movie theater <laughs> yes. went viral. I still and, stand by it. I just did it. I, it's it, it's <laughs> hilarious because I love when somebody has a take and they stand by it. Like you're yeah. like, yeah, I think people should talk in the movie theater, <laughs> which maybe has been said by nobody ever yeah. until you said it, and you open that discussion where you're like. Well, you know, if I'm watching at home with my friends or, yeah, or anybody, yeah, sometimes you talk out loud. No, you talk yeah. a lot. <laughs> yeah. I if no, if I watch it at home, yeah. I will sit with the remote and yeah. I'll be like, pause. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's analyze. Yeah. It takes four hours for me mm -hmm. to watch a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. I should probably pause and talk more right. often because I just talk right. while I'm at home yeah. and I could see how that it's, can... it, for me it's a part of the movie but then I said like oh like I'm disrespectful and sometimes sometimes things are just for comedic effects yeah. online yeah like totally. I'm not a disrespectful yeah. person right. I've actually right. never had someone tell me like shush or like be, be quiet or something yeah. in the cinema I've never had that so the comedic relief yes and I <laughs> also I love what you said about it too because you were like look I make these I make these videos I She's like, I thought about it for 30 seconds and I put it yeah. out there. Like, I just put it out, I post yeah. it, I and think my audience understands. <laughs> and you're like, it reached an audience that is not my normal audience. Yeah, and that's where like the, the problem lies. It reached like the, 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 like the film, like Reddit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And that is a place you don't want to be. Because you're also yeah. like, at the same time, you're like, I wouldn't hang out with you guys anyway. They'd be like, I've never gone and go to the movies with you. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, we're and never going to the movies. Like, we're actually never, yep. ever going to the movies. Yeah, together. you're like, you're, <laughs> you're fine. Losing, you're losing sleep over this. I thought about this for 10 seconds yeah. before I posted it. So who's really <laughs> winning here? It's, that's um, hilarious. That always happens on the internet. You, yeah. you think of something for one second, you're like, that would yeah. be funny to talk yeah. about. And then all <laughs> the, the experts come in. No, I and know. that's when it's a nightmare. How do you, and I and I always laugh because I do feel like you love kind of clapping back at people too like there was you posted too a tiktok much. last month that had me that had me dying because somebody commented like oh she's begging for streams and you were like, like hello oh, yes. this is my job but like please stream why, my why music. do you think i'm here yeah. <laughs> like, right like, now no no don't stream my music <laughs> yeah. i really don't want like, you please to please don't <laughs> press play on my songs right? like what <laughs> no i know but sometimes i gotta like um stop myself because i am very much uh a, a qu quick with my mouth yeah and like growing up i was just i wasn't messy but like i would not be quiet if someone came for me i would come for you back mm -hmm. but now i feel like let's keep it cute yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like i'm not trying to argue with people yeah. online like that but i love that motto <laughs> yeah but sometimes it's just like and when i do it it's very very rarely if any time where i'm like I'm not a very serious person. Mm -hmm. As some, like I don't, I don't take myself very seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so sometimes it's just, it's just fun, fun and games. Yeah. You know, like it's not that deep. And yeah, yeah you're also like, <laughs> I'm really not thinking about this right. any more than yeah. posting yeah. this right now. Exactly. But now that person mm. thinks that you're thinking about it <laughs> yeah. all day long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So you've you've gotten to work with some like incredible DJs too, yeah. which is like really I felt like put you into that dance mm -hmm. scene where mm -hmm. if you're in a club or you're out or you're at a show like you're hearing your voice mm. at a show what has that been like to kind of enter that world mm. like do you go out to clubs ever do you hear like all of a sudden your song is playing like yeah it definitely has happened i think it's so nice to um i feel like pop and the dance world like edm they yeah. go very much hand in hand totally they are good friends and um it's just a really fun thing to do a feature because usually you know i have really grown to be a big fan of the whole edm scene mm -hmm. and um like growing up i was listening a lot to we have so many amazing djs from sweden like swedish house yeah. mafia avici obviously um so many good producers yeah. And just to be a part of that scene is um, super fun. I feel like it's a very welcoming scene. It's a very, it's a very nice community. Like people who also love house and EDM and and techno. Like that that whole like dance scene is um, 
it's very fun to yeah. be a part of. And the DJs who I've worked with are all super collaborative, super um, generous. And um, it just also opens me up for like a new kind of group that I maybe wouldn't have reached right. with just my music. Mm -hmm. But like it makes so much sense to have my voice sing the songs. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's great because and they're just they're so catchy and fun. Yeah, you want to yeah. get up and dance. Like I had yeah, all my course. love playing this yeah. morning as I was <laughs> yeah. getting ready. I was like, this, God, this song is good. Yeah, it <laughs> is. You know, and I, obviously you. everybody in the world has heard Symphony. So yeah. it's yeah. like, love is that. there, I feel like, um, do you, do you watch any, your songs have definitely been like on episodes of Love Island. Like, <laughs> it like, was recently. Like, 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 no, last so many it times. Was, right? because, oh, because they I love those, those playlists. I'm always, anytime uh -huh. I'm listening to, <laughs> to this moments in Love Island, is UK, I'm like, God, this song is good. You yeah, know, like they right. pick great music, it's, and a lot of times I'm like, of course, it's no, and it's it helps Larson. you. Like sometimes <laughs> I, um, like my manager will be like, "You're top three on iTunes," and I'll be like, "Huh?" And then it's like, "Oh, because it was on Love Island." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was watching last week. <laughs> yeah, the, like this recent season, and I put the subtitles on because sometimes the <laughs> accents, like I needed to be really crystal clear. <laughs> right. And I love the subtitle. Yeah. I, yeah. I saw, it and I was like. She's coming on the show next yep. week. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Music buys all yeah. so it starts yeah. playing. <laughs> right. All, all the lyrics on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so, so I can funny. sing along. Right. It right. is it's so fun. And um I like festivals yeah. within that culture is so much fun mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. Do you have any favorite festivals that you've played at or like areas Ooh. you've been to? I um I really love, love, love South America. Like that is just Brazil. Um, People always yelling at you. Argentina, Come to Brazil. Chile. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know what it is. What it is like in their culture when it comes to music and sport. And like they are not afraid of just expressing their emotions, their feelings. I've never in my life um, been on a stage where I'm like, I don't, I, I like, I can't hear myself. Like I yeah. cannot hear because the audience is so loud. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a dream, you know, for someone when you're on stage to have that response right and for people to just really be present and like i feel like swedish people sometimes they could be very quiet but it's also because they want to be respectful for the people like around them sometimes like if you're have a, if you have like a place um like a seat where you're sitting it's like you don't want to get up because maybe the person behind you like doesn't want to yeah. get up and then yeah. you're like oh i'm just gonna be nice but yeah. in brazil they don't care about yeah. that. They're like, I want to stand up. I want to sing. Right. And then everybody stands up mm -hmm. and sings. So that's incredible. Like Lollapalooza, Brazil, Chile, Argentina. That was, it's just beautiful. I really do like my my country, Sweden, yeah. when I'm there. It's nice. I don't play a lot there. But when I do, it's very fun. Um, I think uh, also festivals that are like kind of in the middle of nowhere. Also, that feeling of like, cause, cause sometimes when when you're in the big cities, there people are so spoiled yeah. with like a lot of yep. shows and concerts and events that uh, when you go somewhere and it's like, like you people one festival, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, yeah, yeah, they're like yeah, in yeah. it, you know. But I think every place has its own charm. I really do. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I have so much fun on stage, like. I have a new band um, this year and, and like my dancers and that, but just performing with the people that I am on stage with, we could perform in front of like a rock. Yeah, and we'd be like, this is this, amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have so much fun on stage. Well, that's yeah. amazing. That's the, uh, that's the energy that you want when mm, you're going mm -hmm. into like a new tour, new, yeah. like new, new music, new energy. It's like I've, cause mm -hmm. you also just enjoy performing yeah. the songs that you have exactly. made yeah. that it's so enjoyable for you mm -hmm. no matter mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. who's out there so it's very exciting we're pumped for you thank yep. you so much Yay. for coming yeah, in thank, thank you so your much. new album venus out february 9th yes, yes. so soon it's here Yay. everybody go listen stream Be we're begging for streams yeah. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's begging, sitting please, here absolutely please. begging <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um every you you know, I'm sure you've heard some of the singles already. They're so yeah. good. So please go listen to the whole Check album. We'll love them. Yes. Um, Zara, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. In. Thank you. All right, that wraps up today's episode of Chicks in the Office. Make sure you guys are checking out those tickets if we are coming to a city near you or if you want to fly to a show and make a trip out of it, you will not regret it, guys. We love you. Thank you so much for buying those tickets. And uh, we'll talk to you on Friday.